Before the break, we heard from a retired Army Major General, as well as a Washington Post reporter who served in Iraq for the military, and who is now one of several reporters who have corroborated pieces of, or even added to, the Atlantic's account of the President's disdain for U.S. service members. Today, the President said this about the men and women four sources told the Atlantic's Jeffrey Goldberg, the President referred to as suckers and losers. There is nobody that feels more strongly about our soldiers, our wounded warriors, our soldiers that died in war, than I do. It's a hoax. The question is, after everything else the president has lied about, does he have the credibility to make those words carry weight? Here to speak about it, CNN political commentator Amanda Carpenter and CNN senior political analyst David Gergen. David, you served four presidents. Uh, we know the president's record with the truth. Does he have the credibility to deny us, not just based on that general record of misleading or flat-out false statements, but also his frequent comments in public disparaging members of the military, veterans, uh, John McCain and others? Uh, well, exactly, Jim. I, I listen, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but I think this is, if it is true, uh, it's, it's a dishonorable act. And the voters are going to have to, this November, decide whether they want to discharge him or not. Uh, but I've never heard a president speak this way about the military, ever. I've known presidents who were soft on the military, presidents who loved the military. They always showed respect. They treated them with dignity. They knew how much the men and women in the military have sacrificed, how they put their lives on the line. So I, th I think this is a very damning story. Is it true? I don't, we, we don't, those we don't have the facts. I do think it's time, because it's so important, that whoever is one of these sources, come out from behind the curtain and tell it to us straight up. You know, put it on the record and, and do, do that for the country. We need to know this. It, it would be libelous to do this to the president if it were not true. So I think it's, and what's the more likely outcome? Listen, do you believe Trump who says, who says he insists he never called John McCain a loser and we have it on the public record? Uh, we have John McCain who says all these things are untrue and yet we know from the Washington Post that, that over these four years, he's, he's issued over 20,000 lies or misleading statements, 20,000. Uh, we know that the people who are involved in it, Jeffrey Goldberg is a very respected journalist. He's done a terrific job with the Atlantic. All the signs point to the fact that it is true, but we still don't have all the facts. I mean, and, and to be clear, uh, Amanda, as the president was saying, he never disparages the military. He took uh, some, some fairly dramatic broadsides at John Kelly, uh, who not only served, but also lost a son in combat. I just wonder, you worked for Ted Cruz, you, you, you've worked for Republicans for many years. Is there a line uh, for, for, for many Republicans, I mean, we use that phrase, hold their nose and, and vote for this president, on something like this? Does it cross a line? Well, I think what we've seen that there are different lines for lots of different people. And I feel like a lot of times, even today, we're just chasing the next bad thing we heard about Trump saying, right? I mean, this is devastating, and I have every reason to believe it. And I would hope that John Kelly would confirm it, but at the same time, I can understand how traumatic it would be, mm. given the fact that some of these comments were made by his son's graveside. I mean, that just rips me apart. I don't know what that would do to a parent, mm. quite honestly. Yeah. But... I, I have to ask my fellow Republicans, what, what more do you need to know? I mean, his former Defense Secretary, James Mattis, came out and said he is a threat to the Constitution, and he's the only president he's seen that works to divide the American people instead of unite them. That happened after at Lafayette Square. Yeah. I mean, that, listen to what, don't listen to the partisan, don't listen to me. Listen to what people who have worked for Donald Trump, who have said about what they've said on the record about how he treats soldiers. Mattis came out and said that after he uses soldiers like props to go get a photo op at Lafayette Square. I mean, we we know it. People have been telling us. Miles Taylor last week, Elizabeth Newman, who says that she can't get him to pay attention to right-wing terrorism. All this stuff is out there. And so I just would encourage people to take a step back and not evaluate what we know Donald Trump has said. But what the people who have tried to help him and are now trying to warn us on the record have said. Have you, David, again, in working for Presidents Clinton, Reagan, Ford, and Nixon, but, but observing others, have you ever seen a president have so many people 
who worked for him at the senior level, say in public, oftentimes with their names attached, oftentimes not, but oftentimes with their names attached, that he's unqualified, unfit, incompetent. Is there any precedent for this? No, and I think that's especially true, Jim, in the national security field, with which you're so familiar. If you look at the generals, the admirals, the national security advisors, people that worked at the NSC, worked in intelligence, uh, there are over a dozen generals, admirals, and top flight people who have broken with him. And what's so particularly stunning is the people who are breaking with him are the people who know him best, who have spent a lot of time around him, know him best, and then they have testified to his lack of character. I still think that doesn't, that doesn't solve this problem, this particular set of statements, which I think is so far beyond the bounds. But if you look at the entire record, and then right, it, 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 it really is a good question. Republican, what more do you need? Yeah. Listen, I wrote a book recently. It's both only to people who serve this president. Some, some of, one of his most senior advisors said that Putin is Trump's honey trap, right? It said, said explicitly that, that Putin, that, that the president is in the thrall of Vladimir Putin. It, it, it's amazing what people who served him say. Uh, yeah. Amanda, put this in the context of the race. We're 60 days from an election. I, I know that, you know, there's always the outrage of the day, right? And oftentimes people move on, although there are things that have been more lasting. Um, is this one lasting? If it's evaluated in the context of all the other officials who have spoken out, again, there is a pattern here. It's not just a pattern of Donald Trump saying outrageous things, especially for, this is for Republicans to consider. People have tried to help him. There are Republicans in Congress who have tried to help him and they're unable to do so. And so everybody does have a breaking point, but what what more good can you do? And if the answer is you've tried, you gave it a good go and it didn't work and it's not going to work, look into your heart and ask yourself, what can you do to in order to do good work in the future? And I think that naturally would lead you on a path away from Trump. Yeah, Jim. Uh, quickly before we go, sorry, David. I was going to say, I, one of the previous guests mentioned the generational issue, and that is generation after generation of people who have served the McCain family, for example, of three to four generations of people who have served. If you look at the Trumps, I can't find one Trump in the last three generations who has served this country in uniform. And that's why it's particularly galling to have this kind of, these kind of conversations about our military. Well, from the Washington Post reporting, right, that the president just doesn't understand it. Well, why You don't get paid enough. Well, why, why serve? Um, it's a fundamental thing. You know soldiers, as I know both, all three of us do, you know why. Amanda Carpenter, David Gergen, appreciate your time.